Have you ever said to yourself that you will start exercising but that only lasted for three days? Do you have kids in your family that say, I'm going to make a fresh start, I'm going to study hard starting from today. But a few days later, you see him playing video games all day long. Don't worry, 95% of us can't build a new habit. But if you want to be in the 5% that can pull it off, this one's for you. Because I've been thinking about this topic for a while and finally came up with a simple action plan. If you're a heavy procrastinator, this is really for you and only for you. If this doesn't work for you, I'm pretty sure nothing else will, so stick around to the very end. Avoid being an easy quitter is so crucial in life. We all know that the habits you create will shape your life. If you follow the action plan in this video, the possibilities of you changing your life is very high. Okay, let's dive right into it. How to stop being an easy quitter. It's to continuously make a promise to someone else. Sounds simple, but this is the most effective way for heavy procrastinators. But before that, I would like to explain why on earth we all quit easily. And after that, I would like to explain why continuously making promises with someone else is super effective. Lastly, I will provide a practical action plan on how to do it. Why do we quit easily? I bet you have the same kind of experience. When you see a person speaking a different language fluently and having a great time talking with native speakers, you commit to yourself, okay, I'm gonna start learning French. And then you buy a bunch of textbooks and you try for a few days, but you end up quitting. Or when your friend tells you, have you gained weight? You say to yourself, I'm definitely gonna go on a diet. I'm fed up feeling miserable. I'm joining a fitness club tomorrow. But after a week or so, you find yourself eating candy bars again. We need to understand properly why this happens. The reason why we quit easily is because of our human brains. I need you to understand two laws in psychology. One, our mind calms down. Two, our mind prioritizes what feels good. These are useful not just to stop quitting easily, but some of the basics in psychology. So if you don't know this, you might regret it. The first one, our mind calms down. To make it simple, this explains that any kind of happy or exciting or depressing or painful state will return to normal. It will calm down. This is an instinct built in any living creature. In nature, whenever we get in an emotional state is when we're feeling danger or when we find a delicious food and get excited. But if this emotional state continues, we have a problem. We will always feel tense and get stressed and that will cause serious health issues. That's why we humans are made to forget no matter how happy or sad we are. I know you had some painful times in life too, but I assume those pains don't have the same impact on you now, right? That's why whenever we say to ourselves, I'm gonna start something new and build a new habit and get so excited about it, we need to understand that that emotion will calm down. We always tend to think that I'm so pumped up and I'm so motivated so I can get this thing done. That is in most cases an illusion because we tend to think that we're a little bit above average which makes us a little arrogant and blind. The second reason of quitting easily is our mind prioritizes what feels good. Whenever we have an exam for tomorrow and we say to ourselves, I have to study 5 hours today. We grab our smartphone and watch YouTube and end up procrastinating, right? We understand logically in our head what we need to do, but we're not able to take the correct actions. We humans are sometimes so unreliable and we keep quitting easily. Why does this happen? We humans make the decisions of taking actions by emotions. The part of the brain that controls our emotions always prioritizes what feels good. Building up a habit of studying or going to the gym isn't attractive enough for our brain that controls our emotions. It's not recognized as something that feels good. Laying down on the couch eating junk food and watching TV is what our brain and intuition knows what feels good. Those bad habits have been repeated and soaked in your body. No matter how logically you know what you should do, the part of your brain that controls your emotions won't allow you to because it prioritizes what feels good. This is the law of our mind prioritizing what feels good. I think some of you already know where I'm trying to get to here. Building a habit is changing the priority of what feels good. Our mind calms down. Our mind prioritizes what feels good. These two are easily making you quit and blocking you from building a new habit. Now let me explain what I meant about continuously making promises with someone else is so effective. The reason why this is so important is because it's the only way to change your new habit to make it feel good. And on the flip side, to make your bad habits feel terrible. 
I know there's a lot of know-how on how to build a new habit, and if you're interested in learning more, go click on the link above. Some people recommend making a to-do list every day or blocking their schedule, but whatever option you take, it must take into consideration of the two laws that I just mentioned. The law of our mind calms down. This means we can never rely on motivation. We should think that our motivation will only last for a few days or a week. The second law that our mind prioritizes what feels good. This is a difficult problem to solve. We have so many things around us that makes us feel good, right? Our smartphone is a really killer. No wonder because all the companies and all the content creators out there are trying to make you addictive for your brain to feel good. That's why you'll get easily distracted and dedicate a huge amount of time on it. How can we make the bad habits that makes us feel good have lower priority? It's to simply create a situation to make you think that if you don't work on your new habits, you'll feel terrible. And the worst thing that makes you feel terrible is when you're lacking recognition from someone else. Our ancestors have been living in groups cooperating with each other for a long time. Whenever we feel that we're not accepted by others, it's a very critical point for survival. Making a promise with someone else and not keeping that promise will lose trust. Losing trust is the worst feeling. The reputation of being an unreliable person feels bad, right? On the other hand, the promise that we make to ourselves isn't powerful at all. We don't feel so bad when we break promises we make to ourselves, right? You know what I'm talking about. That's why we tell ourselves, I'll do that tomorrow. And keep doing the things that makes us feel good like playing video games and so on. Building a new habit is hard. The kind of feeling whenever building a new habit is like this. I don't feel pumped today, but I don't want to break the promise with someone else. So okay, I'll just do it. There are days we don't feel like doing it. Building a new habit feels uncomfortable. But when you keep on doing it, you'll start feeling that whenever you're working on your new habit, it feels good. You need to continuously make promise to someone else until your brain starts feeling good and has more priority enjoying being lazy. There are some tips on how to make promises with someone else, so I would like to provide you the action plan. Two points we need to make sure. Build a new habit with someone else face to face. People who you meet regularly but not too friendly is the best partner. Creating a new habit is difficult just relying on your willpower. There are few people out there who can do it by themselves without any help, but don't listen to their advices. 95% of people can't build a new habit. It's just too difficult. If you can't build a new habit by making promises with someone else, the chances for you to succeed is extremely low. The point is to meet with someone face to face. I've started playing golf two years ago, but the reason why I didn't quit is because I had a colleague to go with in the beginning stage. Golf is such a difficult sport and you can easily think of quitting because it costs money and it's too damn hard. But whenever I made an appointment to go on the course with my colleague, I wanted to practice more and be better until that day and that made me keep on going. Same thing when I was studying for an exam. I would make a promise with my friend and go out to the library together to force ourselves to study. Again, if you have a strong willpower and discipline, congratulations, you could pull it off by yourself. But 95% of us can, so if you're one of them, make a promise with someone else to work on your new habit. The second tip is that a small penalty might be helpful. If you break the promise to show up, buy your friend a cup of coffee or something. If you have the strong desire and commitment, this penalty is not necessary. But for those who don't, this will help you start getting the momentum. You need some external help to keep the fire burning before turning it into a habit. Make the penalty small and not too big. If the penalty is too big, you will just get depressed because a game too difficult will easily make you give up. But again, setting small penalties are effective for you to push through. In life, it's nearly impossible to do everything by your own. There are days that you just don't feel like doing it. That's why it's important to find someone that's going the same way. And the promises you keep with them will carry you forward. They are your precious supporters that will help you keep going. Building a habit and stop quitting easily is the fundamental of changing your life. If you have bold dreams and wish to make your life 10x fun and exciting, the people that you make a promise with will eventually be a wonderful asset of yours. Something that you will be grateful in your entire life. You are the driver of your own life. 
and they are the people that are so kind to sit next to you and make sure that you don't fall asleep. Find someone to make a promise with and stop building a habit step by step, inch by inch. If you want to learn how to build a new habit, the next video to watch is this. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Joey and this channel is about self-development tips to change your mindset and change your life. So if this sounds good to you, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. And also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.